Hey everybody, and uh, happy Good Friday here from Dr. Greg and the Catholic Psych Institute. I wanted to offer some reflections today because it is a, uh, it's, a, it's, a it's a pretty somber day here. Um, you know, Good Friday typically is, is a time to spiritually enter into the, uh, you know, the, the passion of Christ and, um, you know, one of the most important days of the year for us, obviously. Um, today we have a little bit more to to be somber about and obviously we have a lot going on in this world and a lot going on right now to to reflect on and there's a message that I'm not really hearing a whole lot from uh, you know different speakers or Catholic outlets or, or things like that and I want to be able to speak into this a little bit because I think today of all days is the day to do it and um, you know there's so much here. I mean, we're looking at an integrated look at the human person and our human experience right now. And so, you know, obviously we have these brains that God gave us. He made us with these brains built in with these, you know, animal instincts. Uh, you know, the biology aspect of our humanity is, is an animal aspect. And so we see things like the survival instinct. That's a good thing. And, and we should be trying to stop ourselves from dying right so that's a good thing we're built for survival and in fact i think that there's something really important even in seeing christ in his humanity that in in the garden in his suffering he was anticipating death he was anticipating his own death and I don't think it was just a matter of anticipating suffering, you know, the, the, the physical suffering of the crucifixion. I think it's because death is a terribly cosmic absurdity and a cosmic tragedy. And it's not meant to be like this. God did not make us to actually die. Right? So, so this whole thing is like, it's not meant to be like this. And what we can see here is that, that this is a disruption to our, our very human, our whole, our whole constitution. Like everything in us is meant to go on and live. And yet this reality is in our face that we're dying. And what happens is that we want to ignore that reality. We want to run away from that reality. We want to hide from it. We want to live in this illusion that somehow we can get around this or get away from this or avoid this or solve this problem of death. But there it is staring us in the face. And there it was staring Christ in the face in that suffering in the garden, in his agony. And we have to learn something from that because Christ's humanity was perfect. So it's not because he had an anxiety disorder. It's not because he was imperfect in some way. It's because he was living out the perfection of his humanity. And it makes sense for our humanity to be terrified at death. We're supposed to be. But we have to go beyond that. The garden, the agony in the garden, Good Friday is not the end of the story. And so we have to remember what this whole story is pointing towards. Where this is ordered towards. And right now... As we're looking around, as we're seeing death in the world in a way that we've not ever experienced, as we're seeing our world being turned upside down, we are being confronted with this reality of death in a way that pierces through the veil of illusion. If we let it. Of course, there's ways that people are still doubling down on, on thickening the veil and, and repairing the veil of illusion. But we can't get around this and we're not supposed to. That's why this pandemic is actually a gift from God. If we have eyes to see and ears to hear, if we have faith and if our faith really means something to us, if we take it seriously, there is not a single Christian that should be panicking right now. There's not a single Christian who knows the story, who knows what happens in the end, who knows what the empty tomb means on Sunday that should be panicking right now. Whether it's spiritual, 
and we're entering into the meditations of Lent and Good Friday, going into the Easter Triduum, or if we're in a worldwide pandemic where people are dying, the economy is getting turned upside down, we're losing jobs, people are getting sick, we're afraid of going to the grocery store, there are no groceries at the grocery store, there's no more toilet paper or whatever else, whether we're, we're being ridiculous or if there's something actually really serious. The whole point is nobody should be panicking right now. If you're Christian, if you know the truth about what actually happens on Sunday, even if we're in Good Friday right now, but we build this illusion that's part of our humanity. Do we want to go into the suffering? Do we want to do we want to feel the terror of confronting our own death? No, of course not. The disciples didn't even want to confront the terror of Jesus' death. Even if it wasn't their own death, they fell asleep in the garden. Falling asleep is, an, is, a, is a defense mechanism. Okay, one, one of the, one of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the theoreticians, the, the, the founders of the theory that Catholic Psych Institute is built on, his name is Harry Stack Sullivan, Interpersonal Psychodynamic Therapy. And he had this, uh, he, he coined this term for uh, a defense mechanism called somnolent detachment. Somnolent detachment is how he described babies who were so filled with anxiety that they actually just went to sleep. It's a way to avoid the difficulty, okay? I think the apostles in the, in the garden with Christ were experiencing some somnolent detachment. Okay, it's, it's a little tongue-in-cheek, but kind of serious. We're all falling asleep on our own impending death. That's the world we've built up for ourselves. That's the illusion that we live in until we're forced to confront death. So why does this happen? Deathbed conversions, right? Or when somebody close to you dies, your whole world gets turned upside down. Well, the whole world's world gets turned upside down right now in the midst of this pandemic. And what are we doing? What are we actually doing to transform the ways that we see ourselves and the ways that we are living our life? Please listen to what I'm saying right now. If you're listening to me, it doesn't matter if you're a bishop, if you're a priest, if you're a father, a mother, a speaker, a listener, if you're a student or a teacher, if, you've got, if you're single or if you've got a family, if you have your job or if you lost your job, if you're sick or if you're well, every single one of us right now has one question to ask ourselves and one question to answer. What am I holding back and not giving to God? What am I clinging to still? What am I attached to? Because every single one of us is attached to something. And right now, in Good Friday, in the Easter Triduum, this is the point. This is what it's supposed to be. Every year, we go through this. Every year, we go through the cycle. Yay, let's celebrate on Christmas. Let's go through the, 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 the suffering of Lent. Let's go into the darkness of Good Friday. Yay, we're, we're celebrating again on Easter Sunday, right? The cycle, the cycle. What's the point of the cycle? The point of the cycle is that we're supposed to be looking inside ourselves and actually converting. We're supposed to be transforming. We're supposed to be dying to self. What does that mean? Give up the things you're clinging to. But we're so lazy and so afraid of looking and actually realizing why we need to do this and where this is going and what the point is. But God has given us a gift. God has loved us. He loves us so much that he's breaking through that laziness and that fear, the complacency. And he's like, okay, if you're not going to do it on your own, if you're not going to if you're not going to really probe deeply and figure out what the heck you're holding on to, I'm going to help you. 
because I love you that much. I want you to be in union with me. I want you to let go of everything you're holding on to so you can receive everything I have to give you. Do you see that? When we're clinging to something for ourselves, we can't, we can't receive anything else. And God's like, let go of it. Let go of your vision of the perfect marriage. Let go of your vision of the perfect job. Let go of your vision of what your kids are supposed to act like. Let go of your vision of whatever your life is supposed to be like. Whatever it's supposed to be, let it go. What are you holding on to? The mass has to be in Latin and you have to be looking in a certain direction. Or, oh no, we're, we need to have charismatic prayer. Otherwise the Holy Spirit doesn't even exist. And if you're not praying charismatically, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. It's all noise. These are serious attachments. And, and that's like one end of the spectrum, right? Then there's the other end of the, of the spectrum. Like the bishops are like, oh, we've got to do this in XYZ and annual appeal and capital campaign. And this is what it's supposed to be. And I have to make sure I look this way. And people can't judge. And, and I don't want the institution to say this or that. Or, you know, what? well, if we say that being gay is wrong, then we're going to cause all sorts of problems. And then, you know, we're not going to make any more money anymore because, well, what if they close down the door? Da, 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 da. It's supposed to be like this. Okay. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I do these prayers, if I say these things, if, if my job doesn't look a certain way, if my relationship doesn't look a certain way, if this, if X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter. It's across the board. Every single person, whether you're close in the faith, whether you're far away from God, whether you're, you've been doing this for years or whether you're freshly uh, converted, old, young, every single person right now, your entire world is being flipped upside down for a reason, for a reason. Not so that you can figure out the best online delivery service to get your toilet paper in your groceries. That is not what to spend this time on figuring out. Wash your hands, okay? Social distance, be reasonable. Yes, we're supposed to think reasonably about things. But where is your heart and where is your anxiety? Are you anxious for the things of the Lord? Because that's the only anxiety that's healthy. Be anxious for the things of the world, of the Lord, not of the world. Do not be anxious about the things of your life. Be anxious for the things of God. And all that means, very simple, is what are your attachments? So, Latin Mass, Charismatic Mass. Okay, God's pulling out the rug. How about no Mass? Now what are you going to figure out? What's important now? Okay? Uh, this kind of job, that kind of job. How about no job? Now what? Okay, this kind of relationship or that kind of relationship. How about now you're stuck in the house 24 seven with no uh, appropriate way to actually escape the difficulty of being in the same room. Okay, pull out the rug from underneath you. That's the gift of God right now. God is giving us a gift because our attachments are what we're clinging to that keep us from receiving what God wants to give us. You know, like if I have gifts for my children, you know, I have like a whole Lego set I just bought for my, for my six-year-old. I want to give him the gift of the Lego set. But he's like fighting over, you know, one little Lego guy from like Christmas last year. You know, and the, and the, the two of them are fighting over the Lego guy. I'm like, I just want to give you this whole new gift. Like this is a whole new Lego set. Like, forget about the Lego guy. There's something better. I have a whole new set for you. You know, and they're like, ah, 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 ah. So then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know what? I'm taking all the Legos away. Right? And then they're like, oh, no, that's the worst thing ever. Is it? Or maybe the father has something even better. Maybe the father has something to give you. But because of our blindness, we're clinging to all the things that we think we need. We're wrong. We're wrong about what we need. We don't know what makes us happy. And God loves us so much. He's helping us let go of all these things. So please ask 
that question. What are you clinging to? What is it you're holding on to? Because whatever you think you're doing to make your life good, and it's an attachment that you're clinging to, an assumption, an expectation, that is not outside the box, not in the world of God's will, but in the world of your own will, you're lying to yourself. If your plan for your happiness does not include your own death, you're lying to yourself. Listen to what I just said. Let me say it again. If your plan for your happiness does not include your own death, you're lying to yourself. If your plan for your happiness does not include your own death, you're lying to yourself. This is the agony in the garden. It's scary. It's hard. But it's real. The illusion that we can protect ourselves and save ourselves and make ourselves happy without taking into consideration and planning for our own death is as silly and stupid as the world during the atomic bomb scare, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, American school children across the country learning how to hide under their desk in case the missile comes. It's dumb. It's stupid. Is it understandable? Yes, it's understandable. It's understandable. Let's be gentle with ourselves, okay? It's understandable. But let's think also and go beyond what's understandable. Hiding under your desk is not going to stop you from being obliterated by a nuclear bomb. And all your little plans that keep you in the set and thinking that you're going to be happy based on your perception of what's right or what's happy based on your expectations are not going to make you happy unless it's a plan that completely takes into consideration your death. Your death. You're going to die. And this pandemic is an incredibly wonderful reminder that God is using to shout through the megaphone to remind us, remember your death. Please remember that you're going to die. What does that mean? Let go of your attachments. Let go of the things you think you need because you don't need it. You're not, you're not outside of this call to conversion. And that's why I use the example of like Latin mass versus charismatic mass. Like Catholics are the worst at this. It's the worst. It's because we have this like stupid pharisaical mentality. It's like, I know the truth, so I'm free from the law. Like, no. We're, we're, God, God, no, it's not. We, we need to do this the most. We need to figure out what we're clinging to, our expectations, and let them go. If you're, st- if you're still hanging on here with me right now, like, I, I, you know, I can share this with you from my own life. Like, I am guilty of this. You know, if I have, like, if, I, if like the household isn't running the right way. You know, it's like we're homeschooling. I want my marriage to be a certain way. Communication has to be a certain way. I'm right, I literally write the book on how to be at peace. And then I walk into my house and it's like, oh, you guys aren't being mindful. Like, can you imagine what it's like being married to the guy who wrote the book on Catholic mindfulness? Or being a, a child of the father of, of who wrote the book on Catholic mindfulness? Like, okay, nobody's being mindful here. Like, shut up, Greg. Like, that's so ridiculous. We need to die to self. We need to realize that our perception, our conception, our, our expectations are what we need to die to. We need to let those things go. That's God's gift to me right now because he's like, oh, you don't like when, uh, when nobody's being mindful around you? Oh, how about the fact that you're not being mindful? How about don't forget that? How about I make you have to stay in this little cooped up environment now in quarantine I'm going to really push you to your limits and make you really recognize it and just take off that stupid veil and look in the mirror and see, oh, 
Your impatience hurts people. Oh, that's the opposite of love. I forgot. Love is patient. Love is kind. Oh, but it, everybody has to be mindful. How about with love? Maybe that's supposed to be there. Maybe. Thank God. Thank God he loves us so much that he calls us in our weakness and he breaks through our blindness and he shows us the truth so that we can let go of our expectations and we can let him love us and bring us into the light of his truth because what he has for us is so much better than what we think we need. So, my brothers and sisters, all of us together in this beautiful life, in this church, in this world, please remember and, and pray that I remember this. This is our ship and not our home. We are not there yet. We're on our way, but this is not the end. And death is not the end. And death is only the doorway. So let it come. Let it come. God's will be done. Let it come. However it comes. But let us please let go of our attachments so that when it comes, it finds us ready. It finds us trusting the Father. It finds us loving so that we can really be broken open by the love that God has for us and we can share it with those who are around us. That's the point of today. Let yourself be broken by love and let yourself let go of your expectations of what you think is going to make you happy. Because if it doesn't include your own death in the plan, then you're wrong. And please pray for me in this as well as we join together because this is serious. What's happening right now in this world this is no joke. Practice time is over. It's time to get serious. Your conversion needs to happen now. My conversion needs to happen now. And the thing that we're responsible for is to, to look inside, to ask ourselves that question, and to let go of anything that we're attached to. So, pray for me in that. God bless you.